What is there not to love about squat? A sport with speed, skill, and passion. No wonder then that it's the game of choice for millions in over 150 countries worldwide. We have more than 15 million people play all over the world. And we have so many new countries has come up with different tournaments and things like that. But talk to the game's biggest sponsor in a sport that struggles even in a major tournament like the World Championships to attract blue chip backers, and you'll find these aren't quite halcyon days for squash. Squash, uh, from uh, say a very popular sport in the late 70s and the 80s, has uh, lost a little bit of impetus. I do see the participant numbers, and of course over the shall we say last 10 years they have dropped. One major problem is a lack of TV coverage, largely because it's just not the most spectator-friendly sport in the world. At the moment, um, we're struggling to, because it's so fast, the, ma the game is su such a fast game that people have a tendency to lose the ball at, at a certain time. But I think it's improved a lot because now we have the glass court, glass floor, and the ball is so visible that you can see much better. Indeed, the plexiglass court does help, and in recent years, the transparent courts have appeared in some rather spectacular locations. So it's our position to really bring the, the game to the public, like bringing glass courts to to um, to the shopping malls or to like main landmarks like the pyramids or to the Grand Central Station. Events like that have drawn big crowds and stirred up interest. But it seems everyone, from the sports administrators to superstars like triple world champion and world number one Egypt's Emma Shabana, recognise the one thing that would truly spur growth is inclusion in the Olympics. Hopefully uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get the message across that squash uh, is still the only racket sport that's not on the Olympics and it just should be there. This is our main target right now. Squash has been lobbying for Olympic inclusion since 1986 and is hoping that from a shortlist including golf, rugby and baseball, it will be one of two new sports selected for the 2016 Games. When it becomes eventually an Olympic game, as we all hope, uh, then I think uh, definitely we'll see around the world more squash participation. It's certainly a very good way to work up a sweat, but quite apart from being healthy, Squash would undoubtedly trump its Olympic rivals if it came to judging which sport had the most unusual starting point. Now the fact that I'm in a confined space surrounded by four fairly high walls gives you a bit of a clue as to the origins of this sport because it wasn't invented by some bored PE teacher or some posh public school boys. It was invented by the lags in a London prison. One assumes the inmates in Fleet Prison weren't as fleet of foot as those playing today, and as it was a debtor's prison, not quite as solvent either. Although when you learn that Nicole David took home just 17,000 US dollars for winning this tournament, and the biggest men's prize ever has been $31,000, you can see that playing is no license to print money. We can live uh, comfortably, you know, but not uh, as... Uh as a tennis player or you know a football player, we so far uh, far away from this, you know. I always say squash is like tennis uh, or, or football, but you take two zeros or three zeros off a bank account. Yeah, why are you talking to that lack of cash might explain the inner rage some players seem to harbour. Although there's little doubt that come October 2009, if the IOC decides squash is ready to take its place at the Olympic table, the prevalent emotion in the game will surely be one of celebration. Mm -hmm.